Hello everyone um, uh, to Monday Night Live. It's uh, just um, me, uh, luckily for you all. Um, just checking in to make sure that everyone is telling a right. Mostly for our Melbourne people, uh, and Victorian people, uh, supporters and, and, and um, members of the, the crew. Um, it's a exciting time because we've got freedom. And that's what it's all about, you know, the, the choice and having the opportunity to do uh, what we want, obviously within the uh, within the COVID guidelines. Still, and making sure that we're all keeping each other safe and making sure that we're all taking along. Because um, as much as I like donuts, the, uh, the, the to see the amount of donut days that we've had through these COVID numbers, um, for this I think nine days or whatever it is now, um, is is great to see. And um, you know, and credit to everybody for. For sticking fat and doing what they had to, um, as much as we hated uh, what we were having to do. So, um, but uh, it is uh, nearly one week um, since all that has really come out, and and what we've been able to do, um, you know, in seeing people, and seeing friends and family, and, and creating that connectedness again. I think that, which is one thing that we've all missed uh, very much. So, uh, I myself uh, included. Um, you know, as much as uh, I love. You know, the, the, obviously the people under my house and, and being in direct contact with the amount of people that can be, um, being able to see friends and family on an extended network um, without uh, without worry or concern that uh, the SWAT team's going to uh, jump through the roof because you're doing um, what could be the wrong thing. So it's um, you know great times for everyone to get involved. Uh, back it's nearly been a week. Um, since Ride With Me, uh, Ride With Me finished uh, last Tuesday, uh, where we did have over 600, or 600 people exactly to participate uh, from all over the world, um, which is an amazing response, and I keep saying it last week, an amazing response from everyone involved to, to do what they needed to do to make sure the event was as amazing as, as we needed it to be. And it just showed um, what the world is looking for and what the people in society are looking for. It was looking for something that was a bit exciting, be something different and, uh, you know, created a bit of positivity in what their, their life was about and, and, their, and their community and their network and, and creating something that was uh, pretty exciting to be a part of and ripping the, uh, the Never Alone journey. Um, as I get to do uh, every day, uh, I get to represent the uh, Wear the Love Me Love You kit, uh, as you can see. Um, but being able to do that every day for me, is, it's a humbling experience to be able to, to represent and, and open those conversations just from the very idea of wearing a t-shirt or a jumper or a, or a hoodie or a cap or, or, or as I said, a cycling jersey. Um, you know, uh, and I think the experience that we got to the fact that we raised a record amount, the people out there, we've, we've fundraised on a record amount, as I said, that fundraising has put us through. We raised over $313,000 to date, um, and still fundraising coming through, still people to, to go through their process of doing the event, because they weren't able to do it last weekend. And we said we had our internationals as well, uh, that will be pumping away through a fair bit. So we're excited about you know what the next few weeks holds. Um, as I said, it, it, it's all very exciting, and it puts us at grips. It's another great platform as an organization um, to move forward. Um, you know, us as an organisation that love me, love you. you know, we've got bigger and better things uh, planned. You know, we've done a lot of strategy and a lot of development work for us moving forward. Um, so and it's taking our small team um, to make it all happen. So it's, um, you know, but it's just another great platform for us to, to bounce off and, and start moving forward with. So it's um, exciting times and into 2021. Um, we look forward to. I mean, we look forward to creating, you know, a blended approach with our programming um, in terms of uh, you know being able to deliver in-house and uh, as we've done in the last six months, uh, digital platforms uh, and creating greater um, self-learning, um, self-directed learning programs around mental health and well-being. Uh, you know, more stuff around sort of uh, some performance centres and hubs and and creating some more sort of uh, some more connection um, via our partners and. and supporters um, all over the country now so it's really exciting times for us so it's um uh, for those for the, the cycling last week to finish hitting it off 
I did set myself a target of 500 kilometers and 10,000 meters uh, climbing, um, which I thought I would, I would have done pretty a lot easier than I, than I had. Um, and, I, and I didn't uh, probably do enough in the first couple of days um, to sort of make sure that that, that uh, target were gonna be reached smoothly. Um, and, uh, but I got there. So for those that actually got there in the end, and I had, I was talking to my wife, Emma, my beautiful wife, Emma, um, you know, it was about lunchtime, uh, just before lunchtime on the Tuesday, and I said, I was like, I was about, I was about 30 kilometers, about 40, 30, 40 kilometers uh, from my target, plus um, I was about four and a half, just over, just under four and a half thousand meters of climbing I needed to do uh, on the Tuesday to, to, to finish off, and, and at that tight stage, it was only about two and a half, uh, about 2,000 or something, whatever it was, to finish off. So, um, yeah, and, I said, and she just said, she goes, well, well, why stop now? You know, and this is the thing we talk about, you know. We, we, no matter how, we, we ourselves, we think we're the most robust of people and determination and all the things just come through. Sometimes it takes gentle reminders from the people around us to, um, to make sure that we're on the right path. And I keep saying, and I've said this before in many of our talks and presentations about the bumper rails that we have in our life. Um, you know, and, and what our bumper rails is, is our support group. And our support group are the, are the ones that understand us and uh, make sure that we are um, understanding ourselves. Um, and you know, for me, uh, that was um, that was happened last Tuesday. So I messaged, uh, you know, and putting that in place, and then I messaged my uh, good mate, Andy O'Donnell, who uh, now two years in a row at the end of the ride with me um, was the last was the person that rode uh, rode with me at the end last year. He's the one that saved me from the woods. Uh, probably would have frostbite if he didn't uh, come come along at one certain stage at the end of last year's ride uh, on the first day. Um, but also that uh, on last Tuesday he messaged me and I messaged him and said, "Yep, I need to do this," and he's like straight away, "Bang, let's go." And spent the next two and a half hours with me on the on the bike and on the phone, making sure that I was in the right place to, to make sure it worked. So uh, I do thank you, Andy, and appreciate that. But as I said, um, yeah, us as an organisation moving forward, there's plenty of presentations going on. There's lots of training programs to finish off the year. Um, we are very thankful for all of our partners and sponsors and fundraisers and supporters and people in the, and people just doing their little bit to make sure that love me, love you messaging of never alone. Uh, and no one travels a journey alone is being heard far and wide um, and that, that more people are having these conversations we're normalizing the very language around it normalizing the very emotional behavior that creates a safer and more inclusive and supportive um, environment for people to understand what this journey is about you know and I've had many messages throughout my days and phone calls um, over these last few weeks about the people that are you know, getting out to the other side and uh, and for those that have been struggling um, and that have reached out, um, you know, we're, we're in this together. And as I keep saying, it's about, you know, pulling our process back, simplifying the very conversation, um, and, and then have that with the people that you, you need to have it with so we can escalate it to where it needs to get to so that you can get be, be supported and get the support that you need and deserve. So um, looking forward to, to seeing how that looks. So it's... um. You know, it, it is a challenging time as we come out of this because there's great fears also about coming out of COVID. As, as much as everyone is excited and pumped and really wants to get pumping back into the normal ways of life, there's still a great amount of fear that comes in with uh, what's happening and change, as we know, um, is, is our greatest fear in life. Uh, is one of our greatest fears in life is change. So it's um, you know for myself to to be surrounded by so many people is, is actually creates a bit of anxiety and in what's happening but um you know we uh we, we keep moving forward and those simple steps and, and and simplifying the process is um what we need to start to, to really sort of engage with it's um but it's you know that that whole culture around um the the thing that i've been really looking forward to and i ask this to people a lot was the first thing that you want to do where's the place that you want to go and for me, it would be just nice to go out and have a date night with my wife, which I'm looking forward to, which I get to do on Wednesday night. So I'm very excited by that um, at one of our favourite restaurants at Maha. So it's very exciting times for us to do that, which is also going to be a um, delayed uh, 40th birthday celebration for me and delayed uh, birthday celebration for my wife as well. But it's a challenging time that we've all been through this year, but we're getting through it and we're going to come out the other side 
better than we went in. And I said that before, and I think I said that last week when I had to, when I talk about Mike. Um, that my aim around this period was to come out of COVID better than I went in. And at this current time, I've actually lost, I think I've lost 12 kilos, uh, 12 kilo, kilograms. Um, I've jumped down from 106 kilos to 94 kilos um, from when COVID period started. So um, just to, and, and no, through no radical diets or anything like this, um, just really putting myself into a position of challenging myself so physically um, and riding my bike 300 k's a week. It's, um, yeah, it's sitting in that little Petroni hurt locker in there. So, but you know, we're all going through these periods. Um, as I said, we'll come out the other side better off uh, as a community. We'll understand the better practices and, and more connected people we need and more experiences we take for um, in terms of our gratitude levels as opposed to taking them for granted. Um, but I think uh, looking forward to hearing everybody's um, exciting times moving forward. So, um, but short and sweet tonight, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Last week, as I said, Ride With Me was a, a, a huge success for the organisation and for our cause, creating so much awareness and exposure for the very idea that uh, that no one travels their journey alone. Um, we have a special guest um, and look forward to seeing what's going on in this world and, and hearing some more positive news and more positive stories. Um, but for now, Thank you very much for your support, everything. Um, you know, I, I am very humbled by my experience every day um, because I am so, so supported by the amount of people that I am um, I'm able to be connected with uh, that trust me and respect the very idea of what we do at the Foundation. So um, thank you very much. And uh, as I said, remember that uh, you're never alone. And remember to look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you love yourself because you do. Appreciate it and goodbye.